things that you're with are not the only thing that are relaxing at the moment. Here we have the female garden orb spider who's just relaxing on the stump. Um, and I think it's because she actually saw us coming. Most spiders this size have quite a well-developed sense of self-preservation. And what they'll do is if they see something big coming along like a buffalo or an elephant or a person, they quickly run from their web to a place of safety. And in this particular case, it's the stump. And now what she's doing is she's just waiting to see if this big bad person either walks through her web or leaves the vicinity so that she can go back to the center of her web, which gives her the most chance of feeling all the, 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 all the web elements that allow her to judge whether or not an insect has been caught in her web. But what is quite special about this particular garden orb web spider is that she is and has a suitor. There is a male uh, garden orb web spider in her web. And I want to just do two things for you. Now most, most spiders, the males have a hard time of mating with the females, mainly because if they make a wrong mistake or they act like food or they don't get it right, the female will instinctively see them as a piece of prey and jump on them and devour them. Quite often, not in all spiders' cases, but quite often the male actually sacrifices himself to the female in order to inseminate her while she's busy killing and eating him. Isn't that just extraordinary? In this particular case, the male generally stays unnoticed because they are so much smaller than this particular spider. I'm going to give you a size comparison. Here's my thumb next to this particular spider, and as you can see, she's relatively large. I mean, she'd easily fit into my palm, legs outstretched, she'd probably fill my palm. So she's quite a large spider. Now, come and have a look at the male who is just down here. Here he is at the tip of my finger and he were, is about as big as my two thumbnails put together. That's about as big as he is. So you can see the massive size difference between my palm and two fingernails. He's probably about a hundred times smaller than her. This is the male garden orb web spider and although we do have garden orb web females uh, on the show from time to time. It's very rare that we actually get to show you the male counterpart. Now he would have had to have walked here uh, and in, I'm still absolutely, un, I don't know how the males of these particular species of spiders actually find their way to the females. It could be because when she's ready to have her eggs inseminated, she's giving off pheromones, which he then tracks downwind. And what he'll basically do is walk here across all the grass and the ground, smelling his lady or smelling this particular lady. And then when he finds an area that is just inundated with a scent, he climbs around everywhere until he finds one of her pieces of web and then climbs onto the web. Generally speaking, he'll hang on the extremities like this. So he's right on the outside of the web and that's so that he can gauge what she's up to. Quite often what will happen then is that they'll do this quite elaborate dance, plucking on the, on the, the strings. They can sing to their lady. Not all spiders do this. They can sing to their lady by plucking on the web in a very specific way. Um, this particular guy probably gets away with the fact that he comes across as something that's just below her notice and as soon as she comes close to him he'll hitch a ride on with her, inseminate her quickly before she even realizes that he's there and then move off. Ah, so. Now, James, you wanted to know if these spiders would build their webs close to game paths so that they could uh, catch insects that are disturbed by the passing of the animals. James, that's a good question. In this particular case, the only reason why I found this, this female was because there's a very prominent game path that we walked on just behind where you are now. So probably about a yard or two. There we go. Craig is busy showing you. That is a prominent game path. Doesn't look like much now, but in the dry season I've used this particular crossing point often. Um, However, that being said, I do not think that they would do that. Um, mostly what they do is they build their webs in places where there's a good breeze and they build their web parallel to the breeze. Now for the last couple of months, there's been a very stiff breeze coming out of the south. And this particular web is angled straight down this drainage line in a north-south orientation. Doesn't look like it now with the sun there in the west, I know. 
but in this particular case the web itself is slightly angled to that if I were to put my back now to the so probably northwest is where it's now so northwest southeast orientation that's where this web is now and it's because what the spider is trying to do is catch insects that are using the wind as transport and she's got this nice gap between these two trees that has allowed her to do that but these but look here she comes back awesome she's coming back down so now she's obviously realized that we're not going to do anything and she's managed to slip past the male who is here and she's going to come to the center of her web there we go very characteristically like group her legs in pairs so that it looks like she's just got one like there's a cross and now she's got herself plugged in to her web she's got her feet in touch with elements on her web that allows her to judge any disturbance she'll pluck on the web if there is a disturbance and if there is something caught in her web she'll move out there and immobilize it and wrap it up